Hey everyone, my name is Poison Blade and I hope all of you are doing well today. So for today's video, I'm going to be building the house belonging to the priest that tends to the local shrine of Order that we built in the last video, which is also going to be a lemur habitat because lemurs are the closest things to squirrels that we have in Planet Zoo, so of course they had to make an appearance. And then in the second half of today's video, I'm going to be building something that isn't a habitat or has any animals associated with it. Because the nature of the place, I just didn't think that it would be right to have animals scurrying around there. And I'm talking about burial mounts. So with that being said, let's get straight into today's video. So I already know that the title of today's video and parts of the intro are not completely correct. Because I'm using terms that are a little bit more generally known, but the correct terms would actually be a gotti or goja, depending on like gotti for male or goja for female instead of priest. But priest is probably like more well known and you get the idea of what I'm talking about. But this is going to be a thread throughout today's video that I want to say that Anything I say today that might sound slightly educational or informative or basically anything I say today could be incorrect. I always want to say this in every video that I make, but here I really want to make sure that you guys know that please do your own research and if I say anything that is incorrect or you might think is incorrect, please do point it out below in the comments. And if you know like what is actually the correct term or like the correct thing to say, then please again point it out and tell me about it because I love to learn. So yeah, when it comes to like Gotti or Goja, this might even still be incorrect because Gotti and Goja is I think the Icelandic names for them because I say Norse mythology, Norse religion, but then you sometimes tend to forget that this was not just Norway, it was also Sweden, Denmark. Iceland, so I think a lot of today's terms that I'm going to use are probably Icelandic, but I'm talking about the like broader thing. So, yeah, it was also surprising that the ancient Norse religion is actually still active today. Actually, the same goes for like the ancient Greek religion, but the ancient Norse religion today, if I'm correct, but again, this might be incorrect. The name for it today is Asatro. I want to, for some reason, roll the R because I don't know. I also do this in Canal Bashar, but there it's intentional. But with Asatro, I I think I'm rolling the R. Like my brain just immediately when it's like an R and then an O sound, even just after it, I want to roll the R. And I have no idea why. I am nowhere n near like. Spanish or Italian or any language that rolls R's. I don't even think Italian rolls R's, but just to prove a point, I don't know why I want to roll the R. But yeah, it's actually nice to see that like the, those religions are not completely wiped out by Christianity. And from what I've read, in Iceland they are actually the biggest growing religion. So yeah, it's fun little tidbits. Also, I quickly want to point it out here before we move away, but these ring details, you might have also seen these if you've watched closely in the last video, because they are on the gates or the, well, well, I'm just archers leading up to the Shrine of Aura. And this is a reference to another side or aspect of Aura, which is more with oaths and oath keeping. I think it was either... Yeah, I think it was like a god of oats, or it was really like heavily tied with oats. And the practice was that you would, to make an oat or vow more valid, you would, but you would take the oat in like a place significant to aura, and then you would also bury a ring there to signify that oat, and then you were never meant to break that oat. So those ring details on the roof here and in the arches leading up to the shrine of aura are a Reference to that because I couldn't put actual rings in the ground because that's just not really able to be done in Planet Zoo. It's just 
too small of a thing to actually build. So yeah, that's also a little bit with this house. So the backstory with this house is that it is the house belonging to what's who is now the Gotti. Again, name depends on where you are. Probably in I think in Norway it's Godi or Gode. But yeah, that's the thing with like Norse religion, Norse mythology and such. It's such like it's not just Norway, so names change depending on where you are because of course different languages and then also practice changes depending on where you are because i think in iceland from what i've read and again point it out if i'm wrong please do because i really like to learn about these things but from what i've learned in mainland scandinavia it was not as much of a thing of like having like a sort of institutionalized priesthood just to um, have a little bit more of a well-known term but then in Iceland it was a little bit more like institutionalized and there was like a set group that really tended to religion as such that also makes it sometimes difficult to really understand it well because it just varies depending on where you are but then this is also with like you know Christianity and such people in Mexico practice it probably a lot different and Italy. I hit my mic. So if you heard something, that's why. Don't know why I'm such like handsy in a way or like active with my hands when I'm making these commentaries. This is also probably the fifth time that I made this commentary, so I'm loopy because I wanted to get the things right that I knew somewhat about. But yeah, so the story behind this house is that it belongs to someone or the who's now the Gotti, so I'm just going to refer to him as the Gotti who was once a great hunter or just a big hunter. So that kind of shows why his house is so large, which was intentional because there's this side thing to the house, which was actually supposed to be the main house. But then anyone who has watched me for some time knows that if I try to make things small, they end up huge. So yeah, that, there's that small thing. But the story is that the Gotti was once... Uh, very big hunter but then one day he took up on more than he could take and he was almost mauled to death by a bear which now actually makes sense why there are like bears close to the shrine of Ulrer. some mysterious hunter actually saved him nobody knows if it was Ulrer who saved him or just a another hunter who didn't see the gutty being almost mauled and just took off with the bear or something or like the dead bear by now yeah the gutty of course says oh it was Aura who saved me and then he became devoted to Aura and is now keeping up the shrine to Aura. So he is the one who either built or funded the new wood structure that is on the shrine of Aura. Yeah that's basically the backstory that it's well known hunter turned to be a really big devotee to Aura after a situation or miracle happened in his life this is a little bit of a trend with norse religion or ancient norse religion it kind of looks or from what i've learned was a little bit more like you are in control of how you practice your religion you're not really dependent on like a outside person such as a priest you were more like you did it yourself but anyway so with the house of course because it's still in the heart of the forest I wanted to make it somewhat self-sufficient and I kind of went for this, not the correct term for it, but three-tiered system where you had one field that was bare, so that one is overgrown here. Then you had one field that I think if I'm correct, but I'm probably not, but one field that had summer crops such as grain and such, and then another field which had winter crops so that you would have food all year round and then every year the field that was like bare would like shift one over like it would go like clockwise or would rotate so that every year there was one field that's regained its fertility because it was left bare also i built this really small wooden structure so because i have this thing right now where if i have a climbing animal and have like a more like civil or civilian kind of builds i always want to make their shelter in the roof because the red pandas in the wizard's tower or merlin's tower, their shelter is in the roof. Still haven't seen them use it, but they should be able to use it. 
And then here with the lemurs, or like I really want to one day have squirrels in Plant Zoo, but we don't, so lemurs are the closest thing we can get. But the lemurs also have their home in the roof. I have no real explanation for why the roof is open. I try to make it seem like the thatch that's on the roof is being like renewed because it's an organic thing, so you of course after a while it starts to sort of lose its function as you know roof covering because it decomposes and such so you have to renew it over time so maybe that's what's happening but then you don't want squirrels in the roof so let's just pretend that the lemurs are squirrels because the main icon for today or for this channel is well me but then me as in squirrel because I have zero patience, I'm always, I think the right word is like flabbergasted when anyone says like, oh, you have a lot of patience, and I'm like, where? <laughs> because I get so easily distracted when I'm building things. Well, I get easily distracted. The only thing that doesn't really associate me with a squirrel is that I don't like nuts. Peanuts or any kind of nuts. But anyway, so... Now I'm building some burial mounds and here is where it comes into play that Valhalla is not going to be completely historically accurate. Because for these burial mounds I did look up burial mounds in real life. The search results mostly gave me ones in Denmark. So yeah they might be a little bit more like Danish burial mounds but I also had some in Norway. And I think one in Iceland. Yeah, today's a very Iceland heavy episode. Hey everyone who is watching this from Iceland. Here I had to make sure that they are visually different than the rest. So here is like the sort of uh, struggle between like, do I want to make this historically accurate or do I want to make this really visually different and appealing? Because there is this thing where burial mounds were destroyed because they were like plowed over or something or just in any way destroyed. I can kind of see, this is not a good thing, but I can kind of see why this happened because burial mounds, like if I made them completely accurate, most of them would look just like hills because it's just this raised bit of earth. So I made sure to make them visually different here. So here it sort of loses the historical accuracy and I also played a little bit with Lord of the Rings because two of these burial mounds are going to be covered in those white flowers. So if you've seen Lord of the Rings and know about which scene I'm talking about, then you know where those flowers came from. And all of them are surrounded in these stone rings or rings of stones. Some burial mounds that I looked up had this, most of them didn't, but again this is to make them really visually different so that when you are exploring Valhalla, you merely know Oh, this is supposed to be some kind of place, it's just not, it's not just a random place in the forest. Yeah, one of them has a, I think you call it a standing stone on top of them, it's the largest. And it's also one that has an actual entrance, which again, probably not completely accurate because none of the burial mounds that I looked up had this. But I wanted to make this area look really just different so that it wouldn't really blend in with the rest of the forest because this is still in the forest so there's a lot of trees here so I didn't want to have any chance that people might walk across this place and think oh I'm just in another part of the forest that you really just stand still and just think what is this place and this is also why I didn't want animals scurrying around here just I just assumed that this place would be like really like tranquil and such there's like a little bit of ancestor worship going on with like well ancient Norse religion I think I don't know if it's still in ancient Norse religion of today which I hope I got the name right with Asatro probably not like when it comes to names I'm just the biggest doofus yeah I hope I got the names correct but Probably not. I'm just going to assume I'm not correct and I'm already going to apologize. I really like that I here went for not complete accuracy and more like oh, I want to make this visually as appealing as possible and I really like all the white flowers. And the story behind here is that because there's like some form of ancestor worship in Norse religion, I wanted to make it look like oh maybe they brought these flowers to the burial mounds to sort of 
gain the wisdom of their ancestors and search and just pray to their ancestors or maybe a sacrifices to their ancestors and then because they are left here these flowers just sort of grew all over these mounds and one of these mounds i actually want to make wanted to make sure that they are different again so one of them is actually quite new there's a little bit of plants there but most of it is just freshly plowed dirt in a way or freshly raised dirt or fresh burial mounds which sounds weird but so two of them are older and you can see that because they're just covered with plants the biggest and oldest one actually has a tree already growing on it because it's in the middle of the forest so it's kind of being reclaimed by nature again so that's mostly going to be it there's one big stone in the middle because why not i surround it with candles because why not <laughs> and i want to say this but Valhalla is not going to be completely accurate to just Norse religion and Norse culture again I'm speaking of this as like it's Norse but then it's such a big area to cover but I also want to cover Celtic and Slavic religion or mythology and culture basically I want to cover more so Valhalla it was actually pointed out to me that Valhalla is not the correct name, it's Valhall. But this just shows like, Valhalla is not meant to be historically correct or correct in any way. It has a lot of Norse influence, but it's also very heavily tied into fantasy. And then I want to include Celtic mythology, Celtic culture. There's already a reference to Arthurian legends with Merlin's Tower. I want to include Slavic mythology and culture. But anyway, that's going to be it for today's video. So if you liked today's video, there's of course the like button. If you really liked today's video and you want to see more, there's of course the subscribe button, which is help, which would help out a lot. And there's also this bell button that never seems to work, but maybe you mysteriously can get it to work. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's video and I wish you all an amazing day. Bye-bye.